thousands of people are fleeing their homes in the southern Philippines after Islamic militants began a violent rampage through the region. In response, Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte has declared martial law. If I start to declare martial law, I will solve all the problems of Mindanao connected with law and order. Fighting erupted Tuesday when the country's military tried to fend off the extremists who had taken control of large parts of the city. The group beheaded a police chief, abducted a Catholic priest, and burned down dozens of buildings. Many highways were at a standstill as thousands tried to escape the violence. But with military checkpoints in place throughout the region, many have been forced to flee on foot. Joining us now from Manila for more on this is political analyst and author Richard Haydarian. Uh, Richard, first of all, thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we want to start with the president's, President Duterte's declaration, the declaration of martial law. Do you believe that was the only route he had, the only choice he had to stop the ISIS-linked militants? Well, per Philippine Constitution, uh, President Duterte, within 48 hours, should provide uh, sufficient facts, uh, that's what the Constitution says, very specific basis to say why he's declaring martial law, why not other, other measures provided by the Constitution, because he could have also declared a state of lawlessness or a state of emergency, which would have still given him uh, sufficient legal leeway to mobilize the armed forces of the Philippines to deal uh, with the problem of terrorism head on. But why martial law? And why martial law across the whole Mindanao region? Why not only in Marawi City, which was attacked by the Mawet group, or better known as the Islamic State of uh, Lanao? So I think these are the questions that are very much, uh, you know, concerning a lot of people in the country, uh, especially when the president came back from a uh, trip uh, cut short from Russia and during his press conference here in the Philippines upon his arrival, he said that he could extend the martial law any moment to the other parts of the country, including to the Visayas region, because according to him, it's just a walking distance. Uh, so now there's this specter of a martial law nationwide that is concerning some people, but there's a lot of support also for President Duterte because people feel that the problem of terrorism in Mindanao is getting out of control. And a lot of terrorism experts will also tell you that the Philippine Constitution is also very restrictive compared to other neighboring countries like Malaysia, Singapore, or even Indonesia in allowing the Philippine government to adopt a proactive measure of dealing with the problem of terrorism. So there's an ongoing debate there, uh, but there's also a sense of unease. Right, and martial law is something that the Philippines have seen before with a previous president, with President Ferdinand Marcos. Uh, so does this then in, in, invoke fear in people? Are they afraid of what could happen? Well, I mean, generally surveys show that majority of Filipinos are not for any kind of martial law or a draconian legal measure. That's what the surveys show. Uh, now, the Philippine Constitution, the 1997 Constitution, is an antithesis to the Marcosian regime. It, it has so many safeguards to make sure that the Philippines doesn't fall for the same kind of trap that it fell under the Marcos dictatorship in the 70s and 80s. So within 48 hours, Duterte has to convince the Congress that this is the, the only way forward and it, this is the right way forward. But if any citizen at any moment believes that within the next 60 days, assuming this gets past the Congress, this is not constitutional, they can challenge this in the Philippine Supreme Court. So both the branches of the uh, legislature and the Supreme Court could, uh, uh, could actually pitch in down the road in order to nullify this if they believe that there's no basis for this. But the fact of the matter is that Duterte has a lot of support in the Congress, and a lot of Filipinos believe that Mindanao is a place that is getting out of control, and perhaps you might need some sort of draconian measure. But I think the fact that the Supreme Court can intervene later on, and the fact that the civil society groups are mobilizing to make sure that there's not a nationwide martial law, uh, I think that could uh, put some pause on any kind of plans by the government to have a nationwide martial law. But definitely that's something that Duterte is, uh, is, is threatening at this point in time. Then, of course, you have the twin threat of ISIS. I mean, how serious is the ISIS threat in the country? Uh, you're already talking about just one small group, the Mauta group, which was able to rampage across Marawi City, but you have a, a half a dozen of other ISIS affiliate groups, including uh, the, much more, uh, the much more known Abu Sayyaf group, which has uh, been transforming the Sulu and Celebes Sea 
uh, bordering Malaysia and Indonesia into like okay. a Somalia 2.0. So there's definitely a very serious security threat here. And many, re many regional okay. states, including Australia, are concerned about the possibility of a distant caliphate in southern Philippines. Okay, political analyst and author Richard Hedarian, that is all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure.